Hi, Chicken Bone John here. Welcome to this episode of Making a Cigar Box Guitar. In this short segment, we're going to be trimming down the fingerboard uh, to the width of the neck. It's a very simple operation uh, because we'll, th this, this, the fingerboard will have been slightly oversized and we're going to trim it down. And we're going to be using this. It's a plane. This is an ordinary uh, number four Stanley plane. You can pick these up very cheaply second hand. Very easy to overhaul them. Go and have a look at Paul Sellers on YouTube. He tells you how to set up uh, and tidy up and get uh, an old plane going. It's not rocket science. All we'll be doing is using that. Bit of sandpaper and a half round file just to deal with this top transition and our neck will be ready for the next stage. From a previous episode you should now have a neck that's got a fretboard glued onto it but as you can see there's a bit of glue squeeze out here and the fretboard is still a wee bit wider than the neck. This is what we want to end up with fretboard the same width as the neck. Here's how we're going to do it. I've put a bench stop on the end of my workbench or table. It's just a piece of wood that's thinner than the thickness of this neck, clamped on with a couple of speed clamps. And this is what we're going to be using. We're going to be using an ordinary plane. This is a Stanley number three, uh, sorry, Stanley number four Bailey. It's reasonably sharp. You could just sand it off but it will be quite a long job or you could use something like a file or a rasp like this Shinto to take that off. They would work but I recommend you get to grips with the plane. So that bench stop is going to restrain this because that's thicker than I'm just going to sort of level this up by just putting a couple of packers underneath the neck so that that's going to lay, lie flat and just to help things a little bit I'm going to clamp it down this is where these what I call speed clamps the pistol grip clamp, clamps are ideal that will allow my play to come right the way through here and the it's off the if it's off the edge of my work there, so that's okay. I've just got this showing a little bit, and I'm just going to take long strokes down here. You can see it's not taking much. You don't want too much coming out in one pass. And I can feel it biting. This is a Blackwood Tech fretboard, they can break out quite easily, it's more brittle than a, a, a natural wood. It's, it's wood, but it's compressed, it's pressure treated and heat treated, so it can be a little bit brittle. A piece of soft wood, uh, sorry, a piece of walnut or uh, maple will probably play in a little bit nicer than this. But here we go. See it's coming down. We've got the glue light, you can see the glue here, and this is very hard stuff when it dries, this tight bond. See I'm actually holding the edge of the plane, I'm just trying to hold it flat. But that, I can feel that's just about done. We can finish that off just with a piece of sandpaper, this is 120 grit, remember the higher the number, the finer the sandpaper is, or the uh, abrasive paper is, don't use sand anymore, don't even use glass anymore. So I've got a, a block, yeah, with, sand, with something as simple as sanding it's just important that you get a nice even pressure, nice long strokes, and you can see you can see where the sand, where, where the dust is building up, where it's not quite down. That might need a little bit more work. And can you see that mark's going now? 
as we're getting that perfectly clean now. And there we go. And then sometimes I just like to break that edge. More of the case that I don't get splinters in. I'm not going to round that over. We'll do that later. But just so I take the, the sharpness of that. Then I can turn my work over. This time I won't need those packers. Because this is going to go down flush now on here. And I'm going to clamp that in again. And it's exactly the same process. It's fractionally wider here, so I must have glued it on slightly off-center. That doesn't really matter. There's more glue on that, and it will eventually damage these blades, so you need to keep them sharp. It's not a matter of once it's set up and sharpened, it'll keep going. You need to keep on top of tools. You can hear how hard that is. It's breaking, breaking off as I hit it with, strike it with a plane. Using both hands, no unnecessary force. You want to keep the plane flat so you're not digging into one side or cambering off on the other side. So it's a very simple operation. You keep some weight on the plane to make sure it's cutting. See so it comes off quite in quite small particles, as I say, it's quite brittle this stuff. Here we go. And use your fingers. Gauge where you are with the with the job. You know, it's not a matter of measuring it. Most of this sort of work is about feel developing a feel for what's happening, the interaction between this blade and the work, and the wood. Sometimes you might feel you're digging into the grain, so then you might want to plane from the other direction. But I can feel this is coming down quite nicely now. One or two more passes. very light pattern. I think I'll start hitting the neck itself and then I can just finish that off with my block and my 120 grit. You can just see a little mark here. Just move that slightly to get present a fresher piece. Sometimes we'll turn it round to use sandpaper a bit more e uh, efficiently. I don't get a fresh piece. I can see here there's a little bit of a shadow where the dust, the dust still building up. I think it's gone now. another little shadow here where it's not quite right there we go I think we're about right and then I say what I like to do with this is just break the edge that's all it is just to get rid of that very sharp edge the only thing left to do now is to finish this I, there's still a little bit of a lip so what we can do is we can file that and sand that off. So I'm just going to put a block under there to support it. So I'm clamping this down. What I don't want to do, whenever I clamp a neck down, I don't want to be twisting it or inducing any force. So with support with a packet the same thickness as the heel. So in here I just want to get in with something like a half round file. So what I want to do is just smooth this transition out here. Just You need to be careful you don't slip your file over here. But I'm just 
keeping the pressure down a little bit with my other hand. You just go steady with it. See, you don't need power tools to do any of this. You don't need something like a Dremel. I think the Dremel person, I mean, I've got one. They're very handy for some specific jobs, but they've not got a huge amount of power. And for something like this, I really think it's a waste of time. By the time you've got your tools out, set the bit up, put the right tool in there. See, I'm just moving the file. We, and I'm just feeling all, feeling all the time to see how it's going. You know, with all of this, power tools and that, I don't think they're necessary. How much of a hurry are you in? This video is only going to be a few minutes long. I'm just moving it up and down, but there's still a ridge there. So this is a, um, that's a bastard cut half round file. It's a, it's a Swiss made, it's a Valor Bay. Uh, they're quite a decent brand. They're sort of mass made, machine made. Um, they're not terribly expensive. You can spend a lot of money on files. But I, I don't go to the local DIY place or whatever. Uh, you, know, you get these from a specialist supplier such as, I think this one probably came from Axminster. And while I'm talking, we just, I can feel it's about there. There's a little bit of glue. So what I sometimes will do, we'll just put the, just put my abrasive paper on the back of the file. Just tear a bit off so you can see what I'm doing. And really, I'm just using that file now as a form, as a guide. And there we go. We're pretty well there. So, you know, we can leave the rest of that to the final finishing. That's your transition done. That's your neck trimmed, ready for the next stage. OK, so we should have ended up with a neck that's beginning to look like this. Nicely trimmed down to width, your headstock transitioned into the fingerboard nicely and all with the help of just a humble plane a bit of sandpaper and a half round file it's not that hard really okie doke let's see you in the next episode i hope bye for now